Okay. Lisa, I'm testing to go the next slide. All right. Okay, the pun dah keluar slide tu. Okay. Hi, good morning, everyone. Morning, Glenn. Yeah, hi, good morning, everyone. It's 11 o'clock. <laughs> so we'll just uh, try to add more, uh, add more participants. All right. We'll start in two minutes. How are you, Nurhayati? I'm fine. Excited to share. Are you excited to share your your research to all of us? <laughs> yes, I will try my best today. Right. <laughs> yes, I'm perfectly all right. Yes, yes. I'm perfectly all right. Hi, Nofri. <laughs> Is Nofri there? It's Nofri. <laughs> Okay, so let's start. Okay. Are you ready? Okay, um, yes. Uh, welcome, everyone. Uh, welcome to the 21st webcast lecture series, uh, uh, ASEAN's Amazing Women in Science, Water Security Beyond COVID-19. So we're very lucky to have uh, Professor Dr. Harner Hayati Abdullah, the ASEAN US Fellow for Science Technology Malaysia 2020. But before I give her the, the time to share her experience, so let me give her a brief bio, uh, bio or CV. Dr. Nardula is currently the Associate Director of UTM International Kuala Lumpur and Associate Professor of the Environmental Engineering at University Technology Malaysia. She recently completed her tenure as a guest scholar at the Graduate School of Advanced Integrated Studies in Human Survivability, Survivability, or Shishu Khan, Kyoto University, Japan. Nor Hayati is a recipient of the 2019-2020 ASEAN Science and Technology Fellowship, focusing on the strategic recommendations for water sector, water sector transformation with the Academy of Sciences, Malaysia. In 2018, she received the L'Oreal UNESCO for Women in Science Fellowship, and she was the member of the International Water Association Board of Directors from 2014 to 2000, an Iowa Fellow and a Vice President of the Malaysian Water Association. At global level, Noor Hayati has been actively involved with the Iowa program and activities since 2000. She received the Iowa Young Water Professional Award in, 20, in 2012 in recognition of her outstanding achievements in wastewater research and active involvement in various professional development programs. Norhayari 
represented UTM in Malaysia at the University of Michigan Ann Arbor for the Fulbright U.S. ASEAN Visiting Scholar Initiatives in 2016-2017. She was conferred the top 50 most impactful leaders in water and water management, a global listing award during the World CSR Day in 2018. So ladies and gentlemen, our guest speaker for today, Professor Dr. Nurhayati Abdullah. Nurhayati. background and I would like to thank Glenn uh, and then the ASEAN Foundation as well as UTM Harvard Kennedy School for having me today for a very happy to tell you that I have just finished uh, the meeting on the project that I'm going to tell you about I'm now in uh, Hospital Sungai Buloh so our collaborator has been so kind to to deliver this lecture from the hospital right in the office. So the project that I'll be talking about uh, consisted of collaboration with the partner in this hospital. So I would like to thank everyone for joining us today. Uh, there are not so many uh, young professionals, young postgraduate students, do invite them to join this meeting because it's not often uh, for us to meet online and to gather people from all over the world uh, to join this session and I'm very happy to be representing UTM uh, where I am currently teaching to share with you some humble experiences that I have been doing throughout my uh, wastewater career and then uh, of course today is for water security beyond COVID-19 and there are some sharing that I would love you to know as to how we define water security beyond the pandemic right that Dr. K will not be able to join us today and therefore uh, I'll be having the floor all to myself right Glenn so I'll try my best to keep you stuck with me uh, you know that there are so many uh, things going on the radio encouraging people you know to leave each other's company and then I like the word stuck so I'm gonna get you you know enjoy this session with me uh, with some uh, stories to begin with and then I will share with you uh, the type of research that we are doing to ensure water security beyond COVID-19. Uh, it's probably not water security per se because my expert field is on the industrial wastewater treatment, but you will know. Okay, my next slide would be, let me just try and change. Okay, so Uh, before I begin my little story about my uh, career in wastewater treatment, uh, I received my uh, Bachelor in Civil Environmental Engineering from UTM in 2000. I, I wasn't even there to receive the award because I was already doing my Master in Environmental Engineering at Newcastle University in the UK. And then I received my PhD in Environmental Engineering in UTM uh, in 2012. So it has been an exciting journey because my initial interest was in psychology. But during that time, when I finished high school, uh, I didn't get to go to the intended for the psychology course. So uh, instead, I did environmental engineering. And I just decided on that day when I registered with UTM to do my best. Hence, the PhD in 2012 in environmental engineering. In 2014, uh, I became the chair of the International Water Association Young Water Professional Global Committee. And then, as Glenn mentioned, I have been some places doing some research different aspects of uh, wastewater treatment and engineering. Eventually, I get to do environmental psychology during my short tenure at the Kyoto University in 2019. Academic and those are my short story that sum up my today session with you so i hope please enjoy my session and should you have any question at all throughout my presentation do feel free to post your question on the chat box okay so everybody has got dna right yeah so imagine that you are in this session face 
Then I'll be asking you a question. Who is or what is your DNA? Of course, we are not talking about the DNA, DNA per se on the scientific side. Uh, but my DNA are my three balls, which is 17, 14, and 7. Uh, eventually, DNA represents my name as well, Dr. Norhayati Abdullah, with the PhD degree at the front. And then, as you can see, all of these colorful logos are those who have been largely, hugely contributing towards my career journey in wastewater treatment. So, I was in UTM for so many years. I have been serving with UTM as a lecturer for almost 12 years now. And I have been with IWA for long years. And then uh, I am now involved with the ASEAN uh, Fellowship Program. And then I have a couple of good partners at Tokyo City University. I have so many friends at University of Johannesburg. My mentor, he is currently the um, Emeritus Professor at Lund University. We have very good partnership with University of Sukuba, to which my students are doing uh, similar research in wastewater treatment, water security at Sukuba. I went to Kyoto University because they're so good in uh, disaster preparedness and management. And then I did my master's and part of my PhD in Newcastle University. And then uh, I became a Fulbright to experience uh, environmental engineering in the US. How do they do their research? And then currently serving with an NGO, Malaysian Water Association as the vice president, and then uh, advocating for young water program development. So that's basically my DNA. What is it that encouraged me to do research well in this field? So whatever you do, make sure you do it. What it is that motivates you and inspires you to do the best that you can in whatever field that you venture. So in my case, it's uh, industrial wastewater treatment. how I met wastewater, right? So everybody uh, in this meeting, you have your own memories as to, for the young postgraduate students, how do you actually begin with the research that you are currently doing? And for all of the young researchers and scientists, what is it that, you know, pick you up in terms of doing your study and your research? Uh, my mentor and my PhD supervisor was uh, Professor Zaini Ujang. Then uh, that was actually his uh, Facebook posting, uh, congratulating me on my seven years of anniversary upon obtaining my PhD. Uh, and then I work in aerobic granulation using palm oil mill effluent development and microbial characterization via collaborative works between UTM and Newcastle University with Professor Tom Curtis. Uh, if you can photo down below me and Tom wearing similar green outfit color uh, during one of our meeting back in Newcastle, I think a couple of years back. And then my key paper, which you can refer to, to this research is published in 2013. And since then I have done uh, so many research in terms of uh, wastewater treatment, industrial wastewater treatment, uh, moving on to expanding it to microalgae research. And then I have some work on water security as well, which I presented at some of the congresses organized by IWA. And then during my PhD years, the key memorable event that I participated was in SET for science engineering competition at the House of Commons in London, where the Big Ben is. It's a very, very prestigious um, competition for PhD candidates during that time. I think it's still going whereby uh, we have to get recommendation from our professor as well as getting recommendation from mayor of Newcastle in the next photo. So I was with the mayor of Newcastle uh, then research at the House of Commons. So uh, that was my key memorable event uh, during my PhD time whereby I got to present my work on palm oil mill effluent uh, treatment at the House of Commons London, because palm oil is the interest for uh, everyone as it has a competitiveness with the other uh, oils that we have in the world. That's my short story, how I waste water, right? So you can start asking yourself as to how you meet your 
passion in research and how you meet your passion in the study that you are currently doing. Water career. If I may share with you, because I have uh, some time, I guess, from Glenn um, <clears throat> today, uh, I have been involved with the IWA, International Water Association, since 2002. So I began with an IWA student membership whereby uh, the membership fees was paid by my supervisor because at that time I still can't afford it, right? And then in 2009, so I was a student member and then I had a career between 2004 until 2009. Uh, I had my two children abroad uh, and then uh, I just decided not to do anything during that time except for my master's degree, which probably took about one year and a half in 2004. And then uh, in 2009, I come back to Malaysia and commence my PhD at UTM. And then uh, during that year, uh, I began to involved in the IWA as Malaysia Steering Committee. Eventually, one thing led to another, and then I guess I must have done my research right, and then uh, uh, there have been on things that I did with them for the young water professional. So in 2012, the recognition came from the IWA for the Young Water Professional Award for Malaysia. So very happy to receive that award during my PhD years. So if we have any young postgraduate students listening today to this session, be sure to know what are your dreams and what is it that you want to achieve step into your research career, your research journey, what is it that you want to encounter throughout that journey? Because it is very important to have goals and big dreams. It is possible for you to achieve those by having the correct network to support you and to make the network work for you. Okay. And then 2014, uh, I became the chair of the IWA Young Water Professional Steering Committee, whereby I served the board for two terms and then currently I am IWA fellow for five years tenure. What do I get from IWA and what can you get from being involved with an NGO organization? And you have to specifically identify uh, an association organization that may provide you with a platform that will help you to enhance your career in whatever field that you are doing now. For me, with IWA, I get mentoring from the IWA water experts, and then um, I manage to develop vast professional network and career development with a wider academic opportunities and appointments at various universities worldwide. And uh, throughout my years with IWA since 2002, I develop excellent recommendations from experts in the field through professional and personal rapport via academic and research collaboration. So this is very important because human to human contact and that personal rapport cannot be developed within 24 hours. You've got to keep building your network, keep expanding your network and showing your uniqueness and then sharing your knowledge and transfer your experiences with each other and develop your pool of people in which you can refer to and then get mentored by and then for you to also mentor the young ones. So this is very important to ensure the continuity of experiences and good things that we are doing in research. It can never be in silo, right? And then uh, I have got some wonderful speaking opportunities at the Cong uh, online platforms to advocate research partnerships and experiences sharing. And then I also received some travel grants for young water profile. I was young before. I mean, I'm still young now, but young before, right? So um, the fees waiver really helps for young students, young professionals, young scientists to attend big events at a fraction of the price, right? So this is very important. How you define your journey towards your career in whichever field that you are doing now. It is very important for us to set our mind and then determine the goals that we wish to achieve at the end, right? A little bit more. Uh, 
um, uh, exclusive interview with a local TV program on my PhD topics concerning the impact of floods on palm oil production. And then we had uh, some topic on the water security, uh, life for water with the former CEO of Inda Water Consortium, which is the uh, National Sewerage Company of Malaysia. And then I have some videos there. I don't know if it's working. I'm not going to play the whole video, just, just to show you. Um, it's in Malay language, but. Assalamualaikum dan salam sejahtera. Saya Nazri Kaha, siaran rakaman khas analisis awal ini dilakukan di media studio di UTM Sudai ini. Dan saya mahu bertuah kerana saya berpeluang akan membuat seorang tokoh, seorang anak muda yang mempunyai biasa dan uh, substance atau bidang kajian beliau ini satu kajian yang penting kepada negara kita dan bagaimana kita melihat masa depan kerana kita tahu negara kita sebuah negara beriklim tropika. Isu di masalah kekurangan air di teknologi so, Malaysia dan for banyak you. kata-kata lain yang akan kita ataupun bincang, bicarakan dengan beliau. Tuan-tuan Nuhayati. Seorang penyelidik dalam bidang air, terutama dalam uh, rawatan uh, air sistem. Kenapa ini menjadi menjadi bidang tumpuan? Kan kita tahu. Okay, so I'll put it forward for you if you wish to know more about the video and then the interview that I have with them. Uh, I'm very happy to share the link with you later. But now moving on. Uh, how do we define um, water security, right? How do we define water security? The United Nations defines as the capacity of a population to safeguard sustainable access to adequate quantities of acceptable quality water for sustaining livelihoods, human well-being, socio-economic for ensuring protection against waterborne pollution and water-related disasters, for preserving ecosystems in a climate of peace and political stability. So to me, as I read through the definition of water security is holistic. It covers everything. So United Nations has defined it really well for us to know what does it mean to have that type of quality of water for sustaining livelihoods for prospering lives, right? And then um, talking about COVID-19 and we're drinking water. So I've got this source from uh, the Malaysian Water Association website. Uh, it feels great uh, to be uh, featuring uh, some of the FAQs that MWA, NGO, um, being published online and then uh, everyone can refer to it and I'm sure every country has the same and similar guidelines and FAQ in terms of how might we know the relations between COVID-19 and our drinking water and sewerage. So some of the questions that we have received is can we get COVID-19 from tap water and then what is being done to ensure the drinking water remains how do you feel? How do you feel about drinking your own water now at home from the tap? Have you ever had any doubt of the quality of drinking water that is being supplied to your taps? How does COVID-19 spread? Will my water service be disrupted? Can COVID-19 virus spread through sewerage systems? So this is a project that we are currently working on with some stakeholders. What can I flush down the toilet? Okay, and in this water. So, um, for the first question, right, uh, can you get COVID-19 from tap water? The answer is no. Do you know why? Because it has not been detected in drinking water. Even the, uh, the, the World Health Organization has stated that the presence of COVID-19 virus has not been detected in drinking water supply. And based on current evidence, the water supply is very, very low because we treat our water before distributing it to your tap, right? And then what is being done to ensure that the drinking water remains safe? Okay, so I'm sharing the case of Malaysia. 
the Ministry of Health Malaysia has established regulations with treatment requirements specifically for public water health system during pandemic. And this is being done with a stringent regulation to that reaches our tap, reaches us safely in its um, uh, protected quality. Okay. And then, uh, for example, we have um, Ministry of Health uh, to how uh, we monitor the quality of drinking water that is being distributed. And then um, we have also reached out to the waterworks owners and companies to provide information and encourage owners and companies to prepare for potential future events of not only COVID-19, God forbid, but any type of other pandemic. How does it spread? Well, I think all of us are pretty much very aware of COVID-19 spread, um, respiratory viruses, we have to put your mask on and then you have to sanitize your hands. And then if you are doing any work related to COVID-19, you have to uh, cover yourself and protect yourself with the full PPE. And then it can be contagious. Um, now that Malaysia is on the recovery movement control order, there are some businesses that is already reopened and resumed uh, their operations. Nevertheless, the public are very much advised to still stay indoors, uh, be cautious while exercising, no children in public places and things like that. Because we know what uh, is it that uh, the, the disease uh, spread rapidly and without any cautionary uh, warnings. And then, will your water service be disrupted? Well, so far, no. Obviously, we get COVID-19 from tap water. By right, we should be having our water services as per normal, right? And then, can COVID-19 virus spread through the sewerage systems? So this is what I'm going to talk about in the project we are doing. And then is COVID-19 present in wastewater? This is also something that I'm going to talk about in the next few slides. And then what can I flush down the toilet? Since everyone is wearing masks, everyone is sanitizing, nothing can be flushed down the toilet except your own waste. Okay, so very short and brief question. Uh, there are so many sources for us to know the relation between COVID-19 and drinking water and sewerage services. Uh, you may um, download all of this information via the website. We have one uh, specifically prepared by the Malaysian Water Association. Okay. It's very nice to know uh, what other countries are doing as well. And these are largely published in the new website. And there are a couple of um, platforms that provide free access to COVID-19 resources, documents and information. So this is what I want to say at the beginning. Why is it to pay to wastewater treatment? Because life is like a sewer. What you get out of it depends on what you put into it. So let's just spend maybe half a minute to think about this word, the Nobel laureate in mathematics. So life is like a sewer. Mm -hmm. What you get out of it uh -huh, depends on what you put into it. Because obviously it's like a cyclic movement. Whatever you put into the sewer, whatever waste that you put in your sewer system, it gets treated. And then the clean treated one goes back into receiving water bodies. The receiving water bodies is defined as river, lake, seas, anything that receives water, that receives treated water. So those water becomes our resources for drinking water. Okay, so now I hope that you get the basic one, but I hope you're paying attention to this quote. Just try and really did a couple of times and really think what is it that you put in that is the outcome that you get? What is it that you put in your mind that will be the results that you get at the end? Uh, how you decide on your journey for career in wastewater or water at the beginning, that is something that will materialize at the end of your journey, something like that. Right. Okay. Uh, that I was presenting to the hospital this morning, just sharing with you. Uh, maybe I'll take about five more minutes, Glenn. So we do detection of COVID-19 virus in sewerage system as an early indicator of outbreak in Malaysia. And then uh, the project members are UTM, 
uh, Ministry of Environment and Water, and then we have Institute Penyelidikan Hydraulic Kebangsaan, Nahrim, in short. And then, uh, of course, we have Indah Water. Uh, we are consulting with some members of TU Delft and Newcastle University, and the project runs for nine months. Um, coronavirus has been reported to be able to survive for long periods outside its host organism, mediating long-range human-to-human transmission via movement. It has been positively detected in stool samples of infected patients. And then uh, with the RNA fragments found in fragments have been detected in wastewater in the Netherlands. So that is like the first uh, maiden research on this. The, ma uh, the, the maiden findings on this, sorry. And then based on Malaysia scenario, uh, we wish to have a COVID-19 protocol as bioindicator in localized sewerage zones to be developed to enable a fully effective control of uh, spread of uh, the pandemic. The objective we know whether or not we have the virus uh, at selected STP sampling points by using the RNA remnants and then we wish to examine the raw and treated wastewater characteristics during the pandemic. And finally, we wish to set up a conceptual framework and call as bioindicator in localized sewerage zones for fully effective control of transmission and infection. So the study that we do here in Malaysia is um, to collate the data on location of selected sewage treatment plants with potential transmission of the pandemic of the virus. Uh, we wish to conduct the wastewater characteristic study during and after the pandemic outbreak within a span of nine months. And then we wish to identify the microbial composition of the sample wastewater and relate the results of COVID-19 existence in wastewater, if any, to the number of positive cases in the catchment areas by using the NGS method. And then develop uh, the protocol uh, for uh, COVID-19 as bioindicator uh, in localized and sewerage zones, right? To our partners, well, the usual reports and everything, but what we would like to focus on is uh, the study locations, because today I'm talking from Hospital Sungai Buloh, uh, whereby the hospital is infectious disease hospital, which received the highest number of COVID-19 cases in Malaysia. So Klang Valley attributed to more than 40% of dependency led COVID-19 statistics based on information as of March. And then we have done our sampling in Kuala Lumpur and University Malaya Medical Center, uh, the two designated COVID-19 treatment centers for Klang Valley uh, connecting to the uh, public sewerage network under the management of our partner in the Water Consortium. And then, um, uh, the combined capacity handled by these uh, regional uh, sewerage treatment plants at Pantai is almost 1.4 million equivalent, which is good representative of the population in Klang Valley. So I guess uh, that's about it. Uh, some methods, of course, we'll be doing some molecular and wastewater analysis for the sample from the uh, sampling points that we decided. And then um, I think that's it that I would like to share with you on my research and uh, some stories on my wastewater journey towards um, water security relation to COVID-19. So back to you, Glenn, for any question. Glenn? Glenn, back to you. Yeah. Uh, Glenn, uh, dia cut, dia kena, dia out, dia actually connected. Ah, okay, okay. No worries, no worries. Okay, so uh, while waiting for Glenn to come back, because Glenn is moderator, he probably is having some connection issues. Any question at all from the audience? Uh, or hi, any concerns? Hi, hi. Hi. <laughs> okay, hi. Okay, uh, so I just want to ask, uh, have you done any 
um, uh, apa? detection of COVID-19 in the sampling point yet. And then if so, what kind of um, methods do you use? And then if there is a virus, isn't it you need to have a higher safety level in your lab? So uh, when where are you going to do it? Okay, that's all. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Halima. Thank you, my good friend from UTM Johor. Thank you for joining today. So, uh, we just discussed that, uh, that points just now with Hospital Sungai Buloh. Uh, we have had gathered some samples um, for COVID-19 during the peak MCO at the end of March and throughout April. Uh, and thank you to Indah Water Consortium for helping us and providing and rendering support for the sampling procedures. Um, so with the samples that we gather, uh, now that MCO is um, improved, whereby we are into the recovery period of it, we are deciding to send some samples for testing. And then it is ongoing. We are still anxiously waiting for the results, doctor. So we hope to know whether or not um, what are the relation between the samples that we have and then the RNA fragments that we are going to be able to see to validate for the moment our sampling method and then our sampling points. With that, we are going to establish a relation between um, the detection and then uh, the presence of the viruses fragments in our STP with the number of cases during that period of sampling, which is a peak, a peak time for the pandemic. With that, once we know the outcome, we would be able to simulate how might we use those as bioindicator for early detection of the pandemic. So this is what the researchers in Holland been doing. Uh, they, so far, we have not had any publication on this specifying on how might we warn the public in terms of uh, having the relations between the results that we have from the STP uh, uh, going into um, the elements and the aspects of announcing it to the public um, for the benefit of public health. So we're Any other question? To ask about uh, wastewater career or how to be involved in International Water Association or how to be actively involved in NGO Association. Any young postgraduate students? Listen. Nizam, do we have questions on the chat? You can just type in your questions on the chat if you wish to. May I know if anyone is doing for COVID-19 and its relation to STP from any other countries? I can't see countries. I can only see your names and there's no photos. Nobody's, nobody's on the video. So even share your research or your findings, I'll be very happy to hear about your research as well. Anyone? Hello. <laughs> Would it be uh, Nizam? Is it possible to have everyone's video on so I can see some faces? Those listening. Can you can you switch on your videos? Hi. What can we do if we find COVID nineteen in our sewage system? It has been, it has, in Holland, it has been, 
but uh, uh, it is not, um, uh, how would I say, it is not live virus, right? It is not live virus. Uh, what has been detected becomes an indicator as to how they might uh, curb, curb the detection. Uh, and also it becomes like an SOP for the wastewater operator to improve uh, the wastewater treatment and the SOPs that they are currently doing uh, just so that they can curb the, inf the infection uh, at, the, at the STP. So basically, nobody goes to STP, right? Nobody goes to STP at the STP. Okay, so that's one thing. And then number two, uh, it has the um, uh, impact of aerosols at the treatment plan due to the nature of the entry by using such a system, right? So it is basically uh, for the researchers in Holland to provide guidance and guidelines for wastewater operators that they should be concerned and they should have some precautionary measures as they are working at the STP to curb the infections from going around from their side. Any other question? I have another Norhayati. Hi, where are you from? Joho Baru, UTM Joho. Ah, okay. Thank you for coming, thank you for joining. Thank you. Okay, anyone else with any other question? You can switch on your video if you wish. May I know among my audience, if you are um, postgraduate students, can you say yes on the chat? If you can key in yes, postgraduate students, I just want to know how many of you are postgraduate students. Mm. Hi, Peri, where are you from? Peri Avanida. Thank you, Aimi, for joining. Hi, thank you, Philippines, for joining. Uh, Non-Malaysian, do you want to say hello? Because I know ASEAN Foundation made a, quite a, an impressive um, uh, promotion for the session. Non-Malaysian, which country are you from? Do you want to say hello in the chat room? Right. I think if there's no question, and uh, Nizam, we can't get Glenn back, right? Oh, it is. Okay. So, um, right. Since we cannot get Glenn on the session, back into the session, um, I would like to close the session by saying thank you, everybody, for joining today. Very short story, um, experiences sharing. Uh, and a little bit of explanation on the project that we are currently doing with some partners here in Malaysia with you all. I thank you for your attention. And should you have any question, do email me norhayati at utm.my. Uh, if you wish to have my slides or if you have to have further information or you need some guidance for the young uh, students, if you need anything at all, feel free to email me norhayati at utm.my. And then uh, I would like to thank uh, UTM Sustainability Lestari for organizing this and for all the stakeholders to ASEAN Foundation. Thank you so much for the opportunity to share today. And thank you to you for spending your time and energy uh, coming to this session. Thank you. Assalamualaikum and have a good rest of the day. And to Malaysians, uh, take care. Now we can rentas negeri, right? So to those balik kampung for the ideal fitri, for the hari raya, for the makan makan, for the durian, enjoy yourself. But please, please maintain social distancing. Put your mask on and sanitize your hands. Okay. So 
Have a great career ahead for the young professionals. Have fun. Have a good weekend. Thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you. Bye.